Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful it's another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say thank you Lord For another day Every day I open my eyes I see morning light, morning light I know that the Lord just brought me through the night Through the night So I face a challenging day Before he take me away behind to the grind Success on me This wonderful morning It's another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say thank you Lord For another Pleasant morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer, brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Today is Tuesday, the 17th day of October, outside, half of my horizon going to the left, dark, heavy, thick gray clouds. The other half going to the right, up north, gray, but with a tinge of orange behind it that makes me know that even though I can't see it, the sun is shining. Weather conditions. So when I woke up, 73 degrees right now, 75 degrees, nice and cool and chill. No need for the fan, no need for sweating, everything bright and beautiful. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day where you are as well. I woke up refreshed and filled with God's presence in my heart. Amen. We're going to kick things off this beautiful, beautiful Thursday morning with one entitled, This is My Father's World. Let's have a listen.
morning. That one there from the Michael Kerb Congregational Choir. This is my father's world. We're going to continue then with getting our words here up on screen for today. Let's see if I can make that happen here in three, two, and one. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 35 using versicle 1. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Our invitatory prayer. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the Canticle to Jubilate, which is based on Psalm 100 and can be found on page 37 in our Books of Common Prayer. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph for the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. At this time we pause briefly to call to mind those things that in thought, word or deed we may have committed, things that might have been displeasing to Almighty God, things that might have been unjust to our neighbours, or things perhaps that might have been unkind even to our very selves. For those times and those moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honour and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms number 5 and Psalm number 6, and leading us in the reading of the Psalm in honour of the birthday of her son Keegan is Mrs. Carol Moore. Let's have a listen. The Psalms appointed for today are Psalms 5 and 6. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken to my cry for help, my King and my God, for I make my prayer to you. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. Early in the morning, I make my appeal and watch for you. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness. And evil cannot dwell with you. Braggarts cannot stand in your sight. You hate all those who work wickedness. You destroy those who speak lies. The bloodthirsty and deceitful, O Lord, you abhor. But as for me, through the greatness of your mercy, I will go into your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of those who lie in wait for me. Make your way straight before me, for there is no truth in their mouth. There is destruction in their heart. Their throat is an open grave. They flutter with their tongue. Declare them guilty, O God. Let them fall because of their schemes. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But all who take refuge in you will be glad. They will sing out their joy forever. 
you will shelter them, so that those who love your name may exult in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. You will defend them with your favor as with a shield. Psalm 6 Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me in your wrath. Have pity on me, Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are rocked. My spirit shakes with terror. How long, O Lord, how long? Turn, O Lord, and deliver me. Save me for your mercy's sake, for in death no one remembers you. And who will give you thanks in the grave? I grow weary because of my groaning. Every night I drench my bed and flood my couch with tears. My eyes are wasted with grief and worn away because of all my enemies. Depart from me, all evildoers, for the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies shall be confounded and quake with fear. They shall turn back and suddenly be put to shame. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. Happy birthday to you, Keegan. We would like to thank Mrs. Moore for leading us in the reading of the Psalm. Our second canticle for this morning is canticle number nine, the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you will draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our Bible reading for this morning comes from Matthew chapter 10, verse 16 through to 23, and leading us in the reading of the Bible reading, Bible lesson, is Mr. Edgar Moore reading in the honor of his birthday, of the birthday of his son, Keegan. Let's have a listen. Morning. Today's reading comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 16 through 23. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name but the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one tongue, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the tongues of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy birthday, Keegan. We would like to thank Mr. and Mrs. Moore for leading us in the reading. And we want, to wish, we want to wish Keegan a happy and blessed birthday. If you afford me a couple of seconds to get back to the beginning of the reading here from the Gospel according to Matthew, we would have, because of me, we would have missed a portion of Matthew over the weekend. And on Monday, come up thing. There it is. Matthew chapter 10 is where we would have started off yesterday. 
And Matthew chapter 10, of course, was the, the beginning of Matthew chapter 10 is the first part is the sending out of the 12. And um, like sheep among wolves is my favorite line from the beginning of Matthew chapter 12. Like sheep among wolves. Um, again, Jesus, of course, making sure that he emphasizes that there is a cost of following him. And there's also a cost um, relating with being sent by him. And the cost, of course, is that of, well, meeting objection and persecution. And the 12, of course, is listed there in Matthew chapter 10. If anybody asks you who were the 12 disciples of Jesus, you could safely go to them and tell them Matthew chapter 10, beginning at verse 1, 2 to 4. And that will give you a listing of the disciples. And these are small little things that help us huh, to encourage our faith and to encourage the faith of others. So if somebody comes to you and say, where can I find the name of the 12 disciples in the Bible? You know it is in Matthew chapter 10. And he gives them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out. He gives them authority to heal the sick. He gives them authority to, um, you know, use his name in order to do great things. And the things that he can do, he gives them authority in order that they could be able to do it. And I'll tell you something. The same power that lived in him is the same power that dwelled in them as he sent them out is the same power that still lives in us if we believe and call upon his name. But that's a sermon for a different time. And the 12 go out, and where were they to go? They were, go to, they were supposed to go to Israel, to the Jewish people only. It was not yet time for the Messiah to be revealed to all of the nations. He had already, he had already been helping some of the Gentiles, but it was not yet his mission to go to the Gentiles. He was supposed to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel in order to get the hearts of the Israelites to be turned towards the Messiah. Remember, the Israelites had been waiting for the Messiah. They had the wrong concept, but now here was the opportunity through the works of Jesus, through the works of the 12 that he was sending out, where they could rectify this false idea that the people had about who the Messiah was supposed to be. So significantly, Jesus was still calling the Jewish people the house of Israel, even though they had lost their Jewish states, were in captivity and exile. God still saw them as Israel, even if they were not a political entity known as Israel. Mm -hmm. And when you think of that fact right there in Matthew chapter 10, you then could understand some of the, the turmoil that exists in the Middle East, especially over religious conflicts and political standings, yes? And what were the 12 supposed to go out to do? They were supposed to go out to preach and teach and heal, cleansing leopards, casting out demons, raising even the dead. Now, I don't know about you. I believe I have plenty authority through the name of Jesus. Yes, I don't think I'm more powerful than anybody else. I don't think I'm more special than anybody else. I think that the name of Jesus that is available to each of us, whatever the circumstances we find ourselves in, if we call upon the name of Jesus, there is no name that is greater than this. This is the name given to he who is our savior, where everything on earth, everything below the earth, everything above the earth must bow and confess. Mm -hmm. when you profess the name of Jesus. So when you try to do things in the name of Jesus, what a powerful authority you are wielding. And he gave the disciples this authority. Go out and preach. Preach that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Go out and teach. Go out and lay your hands on the sick. Go out and cleanse the lepers. Go out and cast out demons in the name of Jesus. More so, go out and raise people from the dead. The authority he gave to these disciples, the authority that still exists for us is remarkable. And we will hear about in Acts 9 and Acts 20, where the disciples were still wielding this authority even after his death. Hmm? And this authority has never been withdrawn. It is wise for us as Christians today to both believe in the power of God, to do such miracles in and through his people, and not to, not to be too quick. Hmm? Still, to be cautious, not to be too quick to believe on unsubstantiated unsubstant reports of such miracles. Hmm? Because some would claim that these miracles are happening, but um, yeah, you have to be mindful to have a discerning spirit to see where that power is coming from.
And how were they supposed to provide for themselves when they go out? Take nothing. Take nothing. Trust that the Lord will provide. All the way back in Matthew chapter 6. Hmm? Consider the birds of the air, the lilies of the field. None look as beautiful as Solomon. God provides for all of them. I'm sending you on a mission. Not take nothing for yourself. Freely as you have received, freely you must give. He charges his disciples nothing for the power he gave them and told them, go out there and don't charge people nothing. Give your ministry to others without cost. And that's the foundational principle for the command for us to follow when we do ministry. And even though we are charging people nothing, or we should not be charging people anything for the service we provide. Of course, we know in today's day and age, the church needs to pay the light bill, the church needs to pay the water bill. Most of the time, these things should be done through contributions of those who are a grateful people, which is exactly what the disciples were supposed to do. Don't charge the people anything, but don't carry anything with yourself. Don't take any gold or silver with you. Don't take any copper with you. Don't take any money in your belt. Go out there just as you are. They should expect that God would normally meet their needs through the inspired hospitality of others. And that's the thing. It is the inspired hospitality of others that is supposed to be running our ministry. This rule of you can't come in and I can't pray for you if you don't tithe 10% of all you have. Yes, tithing of the 10% is biblical. It is scriptural. But you can't tell somebody, I am not going to give you the blessings of God because you are not tithing. You know why? Because the blessings of God do not belong to you. The blessings of God belong to God. They are free for everybody. And you should not be charging people for the blessings of God. Rev, can you please come and bless my house? Sure, no problem. Rev, how much we owe you? You owe me nothing. If you would like to make a contribution to the church because you so feel, that is wonderful. And you hear it? It's not even a contribution to me. It's if you would like to make a contribution to the church because it's the work of the church that is important. I get my least type in that I'm supposed to live off of. I'm not supposed to be getting rich off the head of the people and the work of the church. Is called a non profit business for a reason. Because the profit that it does make is supposed to go back into the ministry for the sustaining of the people that are a part of the crowd that the church ministers to. And no, the church doesn't only minister to the people who come within its walls. The church is supposed to be active and visible and ministering to the entire community in which it exists, not just the Anglicans. That is what ministry is supposed to be like. Freely you have received, freely you have given. But it's not always going to be easy. It's not always going to be easy. And so Jesus in our verse, in our portion of scripture this morning prepares the disciples for persecution. Persecution will come. Look, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. He was honest. He was free with his thoughts and his words to honestly warn his disciples that they would face persecution. It's not an easy road. You see me and you see glamour and glitz, but you might think it's a bed of roses. It absolutely is not. You're going to face persecution. There was no military protection to protect them. He knew the scribes and the Pharisees would be out there. He knew that the centurions would be watching them to see what kind of things they would be doing and if they are causing or inciting civil unrest. He knew that there would be those diehard Jews who when they get there with this new preaching would chase them out. He knew that after they heal and they raise from the dead, people would tell them negative things and run them out just the same way they did him. Blessed are you when men revile and persecute you for my name's sake, for such have they done to me and the prophets who have come before you. Persecution was going to exist. And he tells them, sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. Can you imagine? Seven wolves and one sheep. In my mind, the wool is no longer white, the wool is red because the seven will attack. 
Hmm? Send them out like sheep into the midst of wolves means that there's going to be assault from every side. But you got to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Use the wisdom of God to protect yourself when you are being persecuted. And do not render evil for evil. Maintain your innocence and continue to trust in God. Beware of them. Be mindful of them. For they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. You will be dragged before governors and kings because of me. As a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. Hmm? Despite their vulnerable position. Despite the fact that he knew they were going to face persecution. Jesus told his followers not to defend themselves with worldly form of power. Wisdom would keep them from attracting unnecessary trouble. Hmm? Serpents are attacked by everybody everywhere. So they must be wise as serpents as to how to evade such attacks. Creativity and wisdom will cause you to survive. Not yielding to temptation, being innocent as dove. Hmm? They will deliver you up. Jesus warned them that men would persecute them in civil society, before the councils, in religious arenas, in the synagogues. They were to expect opposition from both the city hall and from the halls of religion. Brought before kings and governors, the influence of the gospel would be great, some positive, some negative. It still is today. It still is today. And what did Jesus tell them? When they hand you over, don't worry. Don't try to prepare yourself as to what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you at that time. Jesus' disciples were, were being encouraged to have perfect trust in God. Trust that he would lead them where they need to go. Trust that he would provide for them while they were on their way and when they got there. Trust that in their greatest moments of need, even in the midst of persecution, where they had to defend themselves, God would speak through them, even if they were unprepared. Hallelujah, it's always been so. Hmm? It was not, I believe in my opinion, it was not the humiliation I think that the early Christians dreaded, you know. It was perhaps not even the cruelty and the pain and the agony that many of them endured. But I think, just like us, many probably were fearful of being unskilled in our words and in our defense as to how we will represent our God. And that should be the last of our fear. Because he told us, I will give you the words. Trust in me. It is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. And people ask me all the time, Rev, how aren't you afraid to stand up in front of people and preach, even when they put you on the spot and you didn't know you were going to preach? The truth is because I never know when I will have to preach. If the spirit said, talk now, I will talk. Because he will give me the words. And yes, for morning prayer, I go over the reading and I gather my thoughts. I go over the reading and when something stands out, I look at, okay, what was that circumstance like in, in the time of Jesus? And it gives me context. But no matter how learned I am, if the Spirit is not the one guiding my words, it will not hit rubber, will not hit road with you. It's not going to make a difference to you if the Spirit is not in it. Because it is the Spirit who convicts. It is the Spirit who convinces. <laughs> it is the Spirit of the Father that must speak to us and through us. And Jesus warns them, persecution, even from your own. Brother will betray brother to death. Father, his child, children rise up against the parents to have them put to death. Hatred because of my name. And sadly, it is still so. Sadly, it is still so. 
when you think about religious persecutions throughout the world and you don't have to go far in Nicaragua there are Roman Catholic priests in prison because the government says that their preaching of social justice is anti-government and so they are breaking the law and should be arrested and their preaching is not anti-government their preaching is anti-corruption anti-cruelty of a people anti-injustice which is what all of our preaching should be he who fails to stand for the cause of right walks in the path of wrong and when we speak out against the social ills in our society we're not doing it because we want to upset or oppose anybody. We're doing it because we want that if we claim to be a godly nation, that we continue to walk and think and act with the principles of Christ as our guide. I don't want to hear Belize is a God-fearing country when from top to bottom corruption could be found in many forms. Because if believe was a God-fearing country ruled by God-fearing leaders, then God-fearing leaders would make decisions that sit right with the heart of God and that are for the benefit of as many people as possible instead of just the benefit of themselves. Come for me if you want. I'm not lying. And whether it is in the halls of politics or the halls of the pulpit, Seeking to do the will of God for the good of God's people should be exactly what it is. And when you strive to do that, many will love you, but many will hate you too. But what? The one who endures to the end will be saved. And the endurance is not about long lasting who will live for a hundred years. The endurance is even if your life is short, if you endure to walk with the Lord, if you endure to represent him well, if you endure to live a life that represented him well and that strove to do good for God's people. Then you would have endured. Then you will be saved. If your Christian walk is all roses and no persecution. You're doing something wrong. You're doing something wrong. The God in me is supposed to be so effective that it irritates the demon in somebody else. And that irritation is what is going to be causing persecution and objection. And what? The Lord tells them. When they persecute you in one tongue, flee to the next to the next you will not have gone through all the tongues of israel before the son of man come the word will not have reached the end of the earth before the son of man returns there will always be somewhere that we could share the gospel there will always be somewhere where we could preach the word of god there will always be somewhere where we could share the gifts of god because there's always going to be someone new to hear it and in these places whether they are old or new the extent of the prosecution will be there even amongst family from city to city. It is what it is. Jesus plainly said it. Persecution for some would result in death. Persecution for some will result in imprisonment. Persecution for some might not be as harsh as it was for others. But even when they are hating you, they are hating you with good reason. Because you are doing it for the cause of the kingdom and he who endures to the end will be saved mm. it's a beautiful portion of scripture it's a tough one but it is beautiful to know that we are equipped with the authority of God and his son Jesus Christ to go out and do for him to know that he will be there to provide, guide, and lead us as we do. To know that while persecution will come, if we endure in the face of persecution, and we stay true to our God, that he will carry us through. And that if we do, 
the reward of his blessing is great. Hmm. A difficult but beautiful portion of scripture. I pray that you are never afraid to boldly go where the Lord is sending you and to boldly speak that which he has planted in your heart. That you remember that you are blessed with authority in the name of Jesus to teach, to heal, to cleanse, and to even raise from the dead. Yes, you, right where you are. You will face persecution for your faith, but stand firm. Because he who endures to the end shall be saved. Let us continue then with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage B on page 44. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, and your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Our first collet for today is the collet for Pentecost, proper 23. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Together we say a general call it for the day. God, the lover of unity and author of peace, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assault of the enemy, that we may trust in your defense and not fear the power of any adversary. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In our world cycle of prayer, today we pray for the people of Kazakhstan and in our ecumenical cycle of prayer, we pray for our sisters and brothers who are members of the Alliance of Baptists. And now let us turn our thoughts to our own personal prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday on Sunday was Miss Tanya Levy. Celebrating a birthday yesterday was Mrs. Estela Terrado, Mr. Fenton Ross Jr., Miss Analia Zuniga, Miss Diana Walter, Miss Shirley Gaw, and Miss Dennis Gibson. Celebrating a birthday today is Mr. Elston Kerr, Mr. Keegan Moore, and Mr. DeMario Roach. 
We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you will have and will have a blessed and beautiful birthday and that God's blessings continue to be upon you, not just for your birthday, but for all the remaining days of your life. Happy birthday! In our prayers, we continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Eileen, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, and Miss King. We pray for Miss Monica, Miss Sylvia, Miss Des, Miss Aisling, Miss Justine, Miss Lisa, Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet, and Miss Derla. We pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Myrna, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Marlene, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Venancia, Miss Molly, Miss Betty, Miss Marta, Miss Marva, Miss Gloria, Miss Celestina, Miss Jessica, Miss LaShawn, Miss Altia, Miss Teresa, Miss Amy, Miss Agnes, Miss Lena, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby, Miss Arlet, Miss Yolanda, Miss Janice, Miss Glenda, Miss Faith, Miss Priscilla, Miss Jean, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Elma, Miss Delverine, Miss Lorraine, Miss Geraldine, Miss Myrtle, and Miss Evelyn. We continue to remember and pray for Miss Veroline, Miss Carol, Miss Jasmine, Miss Alaire, Miss Nina, Miss Leonore, Miss Gladys, Miss Robin, Miss Shelma Dean, Miss Elena, Miss Louise, Miss Rita, Miss Lisa T, Miss Ulichi, Miss Joan, Miss Isme, Miss Marcia, Miss Fiona, Miss Catherine, Miss Kelia, Miss Velina, Reverend Ilona, Miss Sharon, Miss Elva, Miss Nadia, Miss Maisie, Miss Caroline, Miss Gretel, Miss Sandra, Miss Bernadine, Miss Brenda G, Miss Tanisha, Miss Dominic, Reverend Linda, Miss Charlene, Miss Sheila, Miss Pat, Miss Michelle, Miss Sophie, Miss Jean, Miss Angela, Miss Perla, Miss Anne, Miss Zinzi, Miss Suzette, Miss Kimberly, Miss Shanice, Miss Cherie, Miss Dillis, Miss Tessa, and Miss Dennis. In our prayers, we pray for the following of our brothers. We remember and pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Tony, Mr. Gary, Mr. Belhem, Mr. Ian, Mr. Edmundo, Mr. Charles, Mr. Dion, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Costa, Mr. Finley, Mr. Dudley, Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ishmael, Mr. Walter, Mr. Edgar Jr., Mr. Carlos, Mr. Pablo, Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Ian, Mr. Lyndon, Mr. Mark, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Sean, Father Constantio, Mr. Russell, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Michael Griffith, Mr. Michael Summers, and Mr. Michael Soberanis. We pray for Mr. Brindel, Mr. Ambrose, Bishop Nicasio. We remember and pray for Mr. Gustavo, Mr. Lincoln, Mr. Grayson, Bishop Curry, Father Mark, Mr. Ernest, Mr. Chris, Mr. Trevor, Mr. David, Mr. Carmen, Mr. Peter, Bishop Wright, Mr. Richard, Mr. Irvin, Mr. Jervis, Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Kieron, Mr. Marlon, Sir Colville, Mr. Paul, Mr. Donald, and Mr. Ted. In our prayers, we continue to pray for healing for persons who would have recently contracted COVID-19, those in their forms of isolation, those still recovering from post-COVID syndrome. We continue to give God thanks for the availability of a vaccine, even as we continue to pray for the containment and eventual elimination of this COVID-19. As we pray for those who are infirm, we remember and pray for those who care for the infirm, praying for the protection and enablement of all medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We remember and pray especially for Drs. Hidalgo, Ariaga, Lawrence, Molina, Shogreen, Sosa, Mongia, Ken, Young, Arnold, Arana, Cuellar, Manzanero, Joseph, and Eck. We pray for our nurses, praying for Nurse McKin, Nurse Joycelyn, Nurse Olivia, Nurse Gill, Nurse Lino, Nurse Julie, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Ashley, Nurse Aurel, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Cherie, and Nurse Alejandra. For all persons who work in both public and private medical institutions, cooks, cleaners, adlers, securities, lab technicians, pharmacists, um, x-ray technicians, those in the administrative offices, we give God thanks for your service to him through your service to others. 
We remember and pray for those who cannot pray for themselves that might be infirm and those that simply have requested the prayers of the church. We pray, Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relief your sick servants and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness, have confidence in your loving care and experience your healing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In our prayers, we pray for comfort for persons who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We remember and pray this morning for the families of Canon Valentine, for the family of Mr. Edgar Sainsbury, the family of Mr. David Flores, the family of Mr. Geraldine Mark, the family of Miss Yvonne Peters, the family of Mr. Aldous Arthurs, the family of Miss Sandra Ritchie, the family of Miss Elizabeth Whitley, the family of Miss Shirley Castillo, the family of Mr. Eustace Serrano, the family of Mr. Shelton Arana, and the family of Mr. Earl Young. For all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, we pray that God's comfort and peace will be upon you during this time of bereavement, and we pray for return and rest for those who have died. In our prayers, we continue to pray for protection for our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember and pray for our students, praying for Elisa, Tammy, Karina, Courtney, Akua, Randolph, Ashley, Ria, Kai, Arian, Tiffany, Angel, Garrett, Liana, and Jamal. We pray for our loved ones in the military posted overseas, praying for Jason, Emil, Prince, Candy, Christopher, Charles S., Charles C., Sam, Gavin, Kishan and Derek. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for those who are considered most vulnerable in our society. We remember the poor, the needy, the elderly, persons with pre-existing health conditions, those battling cancer, lupus, or any form of autoimmune illness, for those struggling with HIV and AIDS, persons struggling with mental health ailments and their related challenges, persons struggling with substance abuse issues and their related issues, persons who find themselves in situations of abuse and violence of any kind, praying that the Lord would meet you all at the point of your needs and grant you his protection and provision. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the various branches of our security forces. We remember and pray for our government for our Governor General, our Prime Minister, the Leader of the Opposition, our Ambassadors, our Members of Parliament, our Permanent Secretaries, all of our public servants, especially those who traverse the roads for work, praying for God's guidance and wisdom and His protection over you. We remember and pray for the churches and the church leadership, for the private sector, and for all non-governmental organizations who are involved in any form of humanitarian we continue to pray for the members of the international community, those severely affected by the ravages of natural disaster, those affected by the ravages of war and civil unrest. We continue to pray and ask for God's protection over our region against the ravages of natural disaster during especially this hurricane season and for his protection against civil unrest and war in our region. We remember as well at this time the circumstances with the political situation at the Melchor border. For the prayers of our hearts that our thoughts cannot confess, we pray that God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions by praying, Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. And I want to thank you for understanding, um, with being understanding of the fact that yesterday I was unable to broadcast morning prayer. And of course, as from is here, we are this morning. There's a couple of notices I'd like to inform you about um, in terms of notices from around the diocese. We have a couple of events taking place over at St. Anne's Anglican Church. Uh, in the parish of St. Anne's. The first thing we have 
is we have on the 27th of October from 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m., a delicious finger-licking barbecue fundraiser for St. Hilda's Anglican Church in Georgeville. Mm -hmm. It will be taking place right at the St. Hilda's Church School grounds, and you could be in touch with Reverend Lisbeth or Reverend Rose or any of the lay ministers in the parish of St. Anne's in order to place your order for this delicious finger-licking barbecue. Then, that's happening at Georgeville at St. Hilda's on the 27th, and then on the 28th, St. Agnes Church in Mahogany Heights is having a delicious turkey dinner fundraiser, and I hear it's going to be rich with all the trimmings. The cost is $15 a plate, and it includes a dessert, and it's taking place at the St. Anne's Church ground in Mahogany Heights. Again, you can get in touch with Reverend Lisbeth or Reverend Rose in order to put your orders in for this delicious turkey dinner if you are out in that area. And then this one, man, it says save the date and I wish I could. Huh? Under the patronage of the um, Bishop and Mrs. Wright, St. Andrew's Church, St. Andrew's Anglican Church in San Ignacio presents the Bishop's Gala. And the theme for the night, A Night in Paris. There will be music provided by pianist Miss Catherine Derensis and DJ Rascas. And this takes place on November the 4th, on November the 4th at the San Ignacio Hotel, um, Bajran Hall. It will be from 7 until 2. Dinner will be served between 8 and 9.30 p.m. The contribution is $100 per person and $190 per couple. And if you would like to reserve a table that seats eight people, that is for $750. You can reserve your tickets at the St. Anglican Church um, uh, email address, which is St. Andrews Anglican Church at gmail.com, or you could WhatsApp 615-0588 or 622-9960. These events sounds wonderful. I pray that you will support the thing indeed mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in our parish we are having a turkey dinner sale on the 27th of november right here in the parish of christ the king and be on the lookout for the notice for that shortly as well in other not so happy news the funeral of canon valentine is going to be held on friday um, this Friday coming, the 20th, here in the parish of Christ the King, the body will lie in state at Christ the King Anglican Church from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. and then makes make its way over to the Ecumenical High School Auditorium. It will lie in state there from 12 until a quarter to 1, and then we will proceed with the funeral service at 1 p.m. at the Ecumenical Auditorium. I'm waiting for the finalization of information regarding bus availability um, coming from the west and from the, the north and central in order to be here um, to help support the family in this moment of loss and of course to support our diocese as we have lost one of our own so please be on the lookout for notices with regarding that a little bit later this week as well i believe those are all my notices and if you have a notice coming out of your church mm -hmm, or any of your church group if you send me the information we will try to make sure we share it here in morning prayer Outside of that, I want to remind you of our scheduled broadcast for today. Following this, we have noonday prayers at midday, evening prayer at 5.30 and compline at 9 p.m. We invite you to join us for any or all of these services as you are available. And if you miss them, do remember that you can visit any of the Anglican Church's Facebook page for the Diocese of Belize as well as the YouTube channels. We want to thank you for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize. We're going to wrap things up this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace, the dismissal, and then our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the grace of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord.
Thanks be to God. We close off this morning with this one entitled, I Feel Your Spirit Moving in Me. It's a fun, catchy tune, but listen for the words. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day today. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless and bye for now. Da, 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 da.
Another beautiful day I had to get up and pray I said thank you 